Hey everybody, welcome back to my channel. I'm finally doing a normal talking video. It's been a second, but since it's been so long, I haven't really had the chance to talk about products that I just recently started getting into and started using in depth other than just mentioning them in my tutorials. So today I'm doing a sort of a favorite, but just a collection of things that I think are super slept on in the beauty community. I know that in this community, when stuff gets popular, it's like in every video I know I'm gonna see Shape Tape and that Laura Mercier powder. Like that's just how the beauty community kind of is. We get comfortable with certain products and we hear about them more. Um, but I have some products that I think are really great and that have been some of my favorites in the past few months that I want to put you all on. So that's what I'm gonna do. Before I get into it, if you have not subscribed, go ahead and do that now because I would really appreciate it. And go ahead and hit that thumbs up. It really helps me out. It helps put my videos in like the little suggested bar on people's homepage so people can discover me. And without further ado, let's just get into it. It's the first product I'm gonna be talking about is the Tarte Clean Slate Timeless Smoothing Primer. And this primer I've been using probably over a year now. And this really is a smoothing primer like I've never tried before. In the past, I've mostly heard of like silicone-based smoothing primers that are just like, they don't necessarily correct my texture. They kind of just create like a smooth silicone base, but in the long run, for really porous areas, it doesn't really correct them for me. But this primer is such a weird texture. I would show you mine, but mine has been sort of dried out. But in its like pure intended form, it is really thick. I think that texture just works to our advantage if you deal with like lines or porous areas and you really have to melt it onto the skin and sort of just smooth it out and it really does wonders for texture and fine lines and it helps especially on days where you plan to get a little bit more wear out of your makeup. You'll definitely avoid any ugly creasing uh, or seeping of makeup into the pores and all that. Next is another primer, the Sunset Light Primer Veil. No, Primer from Veil Cosmetics. I have used this in the past few months as a primer. I originally got this in my little goodie bag from uh, Miss Fame's like masterclass. My first impression of the product wasn't like great or anything. I've never heard of Veil Cosmetics, which now I know they're sort of more of like a pro makeup artist brand, but the packaging wasn't anything that looked, you know, great to me. Don't ever judge a book by its cover. After using it, I found that this has such a really like nice texture. It's kind of hard to describe, but it's really different than other hydrating bases that I find that this is just a lot more effective. It's not like your average hydrating lotion feeling product that feels slick. It really feels like it sets down and it leaves a tacky base for your makeup. I love using this with my like little dream cushion, which I'll talk about in a second. It really leaves your skin looking radiant and skin-like, and I love using it on the outer perimeters of my face. And also I find this is nice to mix in with foundations, like I've been mixing it with my Fenty one just because um, it's pretty dry on me. Um, so this is a great help for that. So if I guess you deal with dryness, this would be really nice. Now I'm going to be talking about the Maybelline Dream Cushions. I've been using these since I think they came out probably like four months ago. For me, as I said before, I've dealt with a lot of oily skin and I've become really familiar with a lot of those mattifying foundations, but I feel like they don't do a whole lot for me anymore. I'd much rather have a radiant looking complexion that looks a little bit more forgiving on my texture than having stuff that really clings onto the skin and just looks like not great. So I feel like this is something that is super wearable and buildable, meaning that I feel like you can go out in the daytime and this is just like a really fresh looking foundation, but I can also build it up when I want to. I like using like the lighter shade on my inner perimeter of my face and then I'll go in with my Make It Forever foundation stick in 173 sort of on the outer perimeters and I feel like it gives a lot of balance to my skin, it leaves me looking fresh and I feel like I haven't heard anyone talk about these. I definitely check these out if you're one for like a radiant glowy complexion, this will give you that. 
and it's like probably eight dollars so now on to the next product i'm going to be talking about the sephora collection cream lip stain in this red color i've had it for like many years so the number or color is rubbed off but i really love this red and also Seraphine from Anastasia. But I've been loving using red in particular on my cheeks. Like I said, I like the look of fresh skin. And in experimenting with products that will give me that radiant look like cream blushes, I've found that a lot of cream blushes go real ashy and like they look like they don't suit my skin tone. Using liquid lipsticks like this one has been like a godsend. You can get really flush, like natural looking cheeks. I feel like you want to play with cream blush. This is a good option. You can just like pat it on the cheeks, blend it out. I really love this formula. Even on the lips, it's really soft. Maybe because this is old and like mixed with my saliva. Next, I'm going to be talking about the lip products. The first product is from Rimmel London. It is this little lip pencil in the shade Cafe Oule. I've been loving this lip pencil since probably like last October. It's really like a beautiful more brown red sort of 90s color. I feel like a lot of those mauve shades, those dusty rose or things like that, I they look so pink on me and I'm starting to realize just doesn't look so great on me and I'm not a fan of the way that looks. I found this to be like the most perfect color on me. It's really affordable. It's like three dollars. It's just really pretty. You can wear it all over the lips. You can do whatever you want with it, I guess. You can just line your lips. And that's what I did today with more creamer please from Dose of Colors with the Fenty Gloss on top. And I definitely check it out. It looks good. And then another thing I've been into for my lip is the e.l.f. lip stain in Rouge something. I'll insert it here. I feel like a lot of lip stains are more berry and then once they're stained on your lips, it looks really bright pink and I hate the look of like that bright pink on me. But this lip stain is super flattering. It looks like what I would want my natural lips to look like. I feel like my natural lips are a little bit more like muted, like brown, like flesh. It's nothing that like really looks great under gloss. I feel like if I just put a gloss over my plain lips, they kind of get lost and I, I hate the look of that. So I love putting a stain on and then putting some gloss on top and I still have a little bit of that pigment peeking through and it still looks natural. So I've been a really big fan of that lip stain and I definitely would say it lasts and is not like one that sucks your lips dry. It doesn't cling too terribly. It has a weird numbing sensation I will say, but I still love it and it's my go-to. And then for the brows, I've been a big fan of the Maybelline Brow Precise Fiber Volumizer. It's a long name and has a weird brush. I definitely have a weird shape to my brows. They're primarily shaped underneath and very over trimmed. This product really helps my shape shine through by like lifting the brow hairs up. I get the effect of that wispiness of my hairs at the top because this kind of does give you a little bit of fibers that like attach on to your hair and you see the brow um, sort of hair growth beneath so it looks really like fluffy sort of like a model brow. For a long time I just did like the dip brow thing but again I'm trying to get more into like a fresh look and I feel like this really helps me out in the brow department because otherwise other brow gels sort of just make my brows look messy and even if they provide you know pigment it just looks like muddy and nasty but this really helps my brows look you know fluffy and like precise and the brush actually is pretty good for getting the hairs you might get some on top but it's pretty easy to swipe away or to touch up right there i definitely am a big fan of this i use this all the time and it's made me not feel the need to really ever fill in my brows except for today which i did and this is my alarm to get up because it's 2 50 in the morning and then the last sort of wow card product i'm going to be talking about is this makeup forever aqua brow i know i purchased this probably when i was a sophomore or something i went into sephora i wanted a dip brow they didn't have my color 
and the girl told me this was comparable and I was a little too passive to tell her otherwise so I went through and purchased it. I never used it. It's really not suitable for use on my eyebrows but in recent weeks I've been dealing with like more breakouts and I sort of pick at my face and I get like sort of scabby textured areas and I feel like they look disgusting and it makes me just not want to wear makeup at all. Um, a lot of times, but when I do wear makeup, I've felt the need to sort of just like add beauty marks. So that's what I've been doing with this product. I have like six new beauty marks every day and I'm with it. It's in the shade 30, so it's a good color. I put it on my beauty mark, I put some on the textured areas of my skin, and I feel like it just looks really good. It's a lot better than using something like a brow pencil. Um, because this is a lot more precise. This is a perfect sort of liquidy product to sort of like dab on. I know a lot of people like to draw on top of their own beauty marks when they wear makeup, so I feel like a product like this would be a good idea for you to invest in and it'll wear well. So, and also a brush that I've been loving is sort of like this, um, you know, like a normal like foundation brush. This was like given to me free when I became a VIB Rouge. Um, it's the Pro Mini Flawless Airbrush from Sephora and it, I find it really bomb for really getting precise with product and I can use this for like a multitude of things. I can sort of spot conceal with that cushion foundation if I want. I can sort of use this to blend out my Fenty um, matchstick which I found to be really dry but this really helps me distribute the product evenly and well and I can also use this for my cream blush you know to blend that out on my cheeks really well to give me that like little baby cherub look so I really have been loving this brush um, as opposed to a sponge for a long time I've just been using sponges and some products are just not well suited for something like a sponge especially something drier like that Fenty matchstick so I feel like this is a really nice brush if you guys just were in the market for like a new brush for complexion I feel like a brush in this sort of shape will be really beneficial and will help you get a multitude of things done on your face this is something that would be like a travel essential because it, you can use it for so many things so yeah this is a brush I've been loving so that is about all the stuff I plan on talking about in this video. Hopefully you guys found some products that you want to check out. If you guys have some favorite products in mind that you guys feel are slept on, don't forget to comment them down below. We can put each other on to some bomb products. If you guys haven't already, don't forget to subscribe and give me a thumbs up. I would really appreciate it. And I hope you guys are doing well and I'll see you guys next time.